Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be diving into QuickBooks Online and showing you how to make journal entries. My name is Brett Phillips. I'm a CPA and a tax partner at a firm here in Dallas, Texas. If you're new to QuickBooks Online, consider picking up a copy of my latest book, The Small Business Guide to QuickBooks Online, which can be found on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description down below. By the end of today's video, you will be a master of making journal entries using QuickBooks Online. So journal entries allow you to correct inaccurate information in your accounting records or add transactions that you cannot add in other sections of QuickBooks Online. So journal entries are often used to record new assets, record depreciation of fixed assets, or to record liabilities or make various corrections to accounts uh, maybe provided by your accountant or CPA. In today's video, we'll show you two examples. First, we're going to record depreciation on fixed assets. And then we're going to show you how to record a new automobile and the related loan. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, guys, today we're going to be using Test Drive QuickBooks Online. So for this, you just do a quick Google search for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, and you can find this page here. You just want to select the, oh, I'm in the United States, so I'm going to select the United States. And I'm going to say I'm not a robot. Here we go. Prove it. <laughs> All right. There we go. Now this is Craig's Design and Landscape Services. So we're going to make a couple journal entries in here. Um, let's see. So let's start by hitting this new button. And under the other column, you hit journal entry. And then the journal entry date is your first option. So... The first entry we're going to make is going to be for depreciation expense. So typically I'll make this at year end or if we know the amount, sometimes we'll do this monthly. Um, but typically we calculate it once a year and just book it um, year end for most small businesses. Um, for the journal entry number, typically I'll just put CPA number one or whoever, the, whoever you know provided the information for the journal entry. I put their initials or their name or something um, just so you easily know who did it. Now for depreciation, I like to do my debits first and then my credits. Um, so depreciation expense is going to be the debit. Other expense, depreciation, or let's say this is 50,000 bucks. Here we go. And then let's say 2021 depreciation expense. And then the other account, so your credit is going to be accumulated. Uh oh, we don't have accumulated accounts. So let's add an accumulated depreciation account, no problem. Fixed asset, you have accumulated amortization, depletion, and depreciation. So accumulated amortization is typically for goodwill or um, or like software costs, you know, any kind of, kind of intangible. Depletion is going to be for like mineral rights or any natural resource. There's a lot of times oil and gas is, is used for depletion. The depreciation is going to be the most commonly used accumulated um, account, which is going to be uh, accumulated depreciation. That'll be for all your fixed assets, your buildings, your automobiles, um, computer equipment, things like that. All go under accumulated depreciation. So let's select that. Uh, we're not going to change any of the names or descriptions. And we'll save and close that. So accumulated depreciation is kind of an interesting account. So this is a contra account, meaning it's a, it goes against the uh, fixed asset account. So you have your fixed asset, which would be a positive account on your balance sheet. And then your accumulated depreciation will be a negative account, which will offset that fixed asset account and as you're depreciating it that accumulated account number gets larger until until it's, it completely offsets that fixed asset so once once you know you have your fixed asset number on there say it's fifty thousand dollars and your accumulated depreciation says it's negative fifty thousand dollars and you know that that asset is fully depreciated um okay so that's it so your debits and your credits are equal now if you wanted to make a reoccurring entry you could do that here and then you can select the interval and the start date we're not going to do that for this entry this is just an annual entry that we have to calculate each year um, so let's save and new let's do one more 
Now this journal entry, let's select a different date. This is gonna be for the purchase of a car. So let's say August 10th, we purchased a new truck. Um, so let's put the truck in here. T-U-C-K, there we go. This is gonna be an expensive truck. We're in Texas, we bought a big old F-250. Ford F-250, that's an $85,000 truck. Yikes. And so now we put it down, so our debits is the truck, so that's going to increase the um, asset account, your fixed asset account on your balance sheet. And then the credits, we need to pay for this. So first we're gonna come out of pocket, we're gonna say we put down payment out of our checking account, let's say 15,000. Keep the math nice and easy. And then we're gonna have to create a liability. So we're gonna have to add an account here. This is going to be a long-term liability. Other long-term liabilities. And then instead of the other long-term liabilities as the name, um, typically I would put the loan. So let's say finance it through Ford Financing. Um, Here you'd put the loan number, or you could put the VIN number. Um, you know, whatever description would be helpful to be able to find that um, that loan whenever whenever you go to make those payments. So let's save and close. That's going to be a seventy thousand dollar balance. There we go. Our debits and our credits are in balance. So there we go. Let's do a save and close here. And now if I want to go back and look at those journal entries, I can go back to journal entry here and then up here you can select either journal entry you want to see. So if you want to go in and adjust that journal entry for any reason, you can go in and adjust those there. And that's it. So that's how you make journal entries in QuickBooks Online. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really helps the algorithm with YouTube. And uh, I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Thank you.